Hi everyone, I'm going by the tributaries by the Coquitlam River here in my uh, province of BC. I'm going to tackle some underwater logs today. It's been on my list of master for a while. I've got about three or four under my belt. I'm really starting to understand what's going on. Let's go and see how I do. Cheers. What I've been doing lately is doing sketches of the scene and it's not really a no tan. Right now I'm just laying out the composition to get a better understanding of it and get myself familiar with the scene. And that's really all you need. And then I'm translating that onto the board that I'm using, making sure the horizon is where I want it, some of those logs. And notice the variety, and I'm gonna say this throughout this video, but variety is key. None of those logs are parallel. None of those logs are the same length. None of the distance between the logs is the same, etc. So variety in a painting is, is really key. Here I'm starting to lay in the darks of the back area. What I want you to see here is I'm laying in the darks of the water, but what's important is my deliberate strokes. And I'm not just doing a quick wash where I think everything is. I'm kind of deliberately putting in where all the dark grasses are or need to be that particular value. Keeping the edges soft, that's really important, I find. As soon as you get rigid lines, I feel they stop you from exploring the painting and constrain you instead. Just a short interruption. I just want to say thank you for watching these videos. I really appreciate it. And to introduce you to my new venture called Artful Minds. It's intended for the artist's artistic development and growth. Essentially, it's for artists who really want to take their artwork to the next level. We do this through our skill development exercises, along with our open studio office hours, where you can come and ask me anything. We also have monthly critiques, where you can get up to two paintings critiqued every month. And we also have our monthly challenges. In addition to this, we have monthly inspirational discussions with artists from around the world. And so far, they've been quite fantastic. If you'd like to check those out, go to community.artfulminds.ca under the open studio area. But if you're interested in joining Artful Minds, check us out at artfulminds.ca. Adding some more darks. So before you thought that value was dark, I'm adding in even darker darks now. Mixed in with a little bit of ochre at times. You can see where that's where the light really hits the gravel underneath. going in with a little more saturated greens, kind of just laying in the water before I do anything with the logs, because it's important to get that understructure in. So I'm layering it, trying to bring some life to the grasses behind. Now is where I really lay in the logs and I'm taking my time being conscious of each stroke, being conscious of where my brush is, kind of looking up and down to the scene. And in the scene in the bottom left, you can't really see the logs just because of the glare in the water, but with my vantage point at the time, I could see where they were and what they were doing. And again, I talked about this at the beginning. Variety is key. Each of those logs is a little bit different shape. They're a little bit wonkier here and there. The space in between each log is different. The length of each log is different, etc. There is a place for rhyme and reason without a doubt, but I'm finding with these paintings in particular, landscape paintings, you don't really need that. Here I'm laying in the underwater logs underneath the previous logs and then also establishing some vertical trees that are there. And then laying in where the sun-kissed grasses come in on that little peninsula. Kind of just as a note to myself, I will bring them forward a little bit more. And by bring them forward, I'm just talking about lightening them and adding a little more color temperature to them. Kind of just using the long round there to give them some structure. And this is the key for underwater logs, I find, is you, you have to have the right value and temperature, but as well, you have to have the shadow in it as well. So this shadow really helps them sit into beneath the water. And with this brush is a little bit small and I'll go to a larger one soon enough, but this was establishing all the reflected lights of the uh, green foliage that I could see. And I thought I'd just add a few dibs and dabs, but what it ended up happening is it just ended up being like dibs and dabs and I needed to consolidate it into a larger kind of reflective state and thus being less confusing to the viewer. Again, going back to the logs, giving them some random forms, dibs and dabs here and there, because they are logs, they're not just straight lines. Kind of establishing a highlight on them, and I'll step it up the highlight again, and I'll bring in a shadow a little bit later. But each part of this painting process is that, a process, and it is a step. You do one thing, you come back, you do another, you come back and do another, until you're satisfied with it. Here you can see me laying in the shadows that I talked about. 
kind of gives them that sense of depth. Now they're on the water, in the water, etc. Now I'm giving another sense to those underwater logs, giving them a little bit warmer value on top. Coming into the grasses again at the top, kind of cooling the ones that behind the foreground grasses. And then I'm here, I'm establishing those vertical dead trees that are coming out of the water. And again, variety is key. None of those logs end in the water at the same point, trying to keep the distance between each of those vertical trees a little bit different. There is no direct pattern associated with it. And this is the dark, so now I'm bringing in kind of the mid. And the key to make something a little more noticeable in painting is to give it three values. And so now I'm coming in with a little bit lighter value on those trees. And that's pretty much all you really need to define something, especially if it's not going to be your focal point, right? If it's your focal point, maybe you want to do five values. And here, this is a concerned effort to bring in the right value for the reflections. And it's a concerned effort to establish how those reflections are laid into the water. And notice how the reflections are starting to come over those logs. So now you understand that these logs are underneath the water. It really helps create that illusion. But I'm being very purposeful and very understanding of the strokes that I am committing here. Because once I do it, they're kind of set. I'd have to repaint the underneath if I made a mistake. Again, coming in with the logs with a little bit of brighter light on top of them. Trying to determine what's important. Emphasizing the shadow underneath some of those logs crossing on the water. Trying to de-emphasize this log on the left, kind of giving it, a, giving it a more of a violet tone, creating a sense of jaggedness of the log and doing that as well with the uh, logs laying on top of the water. You don't want anything to look too contrite, too man-made, especially when we're talking nature. bringing in another step of temperature in those underwater logs. And then this is where the interesting part comes in with the water. All the little highlights and dibs and dabs on the water. And usually you can guarantee that a lot of these specular highlights will be around where something enters the water. Whether it be a tree, a log, or even a blade of grass. It's just the size that varies. Adjusting that value of that log a little bit more just to subdue it. It's not the focal point of the painting, so it's there for context only. That means I don't have to make it interesting. Putting a little bit of cool light on those logs to help bring you into the focal point. And you can see that's what I'm trying to emphasize right now with the, some warmer grasses in that back area. And it's all about variety. So some of those strokes are a little bit cooler, some a little bit warmer, some are a little bit lighter. Some are more yellow, some are more green, etc. and trying to just bring these uh, reflections over again. Now, here's the fun part as well, adding some interest into the water by bringing reflectiveness in some of the waves. You notice some of those lines that are angular. Water doesn't always just travel horizontally, and I find the sense of realism really steps up into your painting when you start bringing in water that's a little more angular to the surface. Emphasizing some darks within the logs. Bringing in uh, another step of warmth and lightness within those grasses to really draw you up because that is essentially my focal point there. Getting that contrast with that little bit of log and also that is my warmest aspect within that painting. And some of the last elements here are those really, really bright specular highlights on that water. And I find this is what really brings the water to life. The other strokes have helped, but sometimes you just need that really bright specular highlight. Now the key to this is not to do too much, and that only comes with experience. And I think I did a fairly good job here. You don't get a sense of it's overwhelming. You travel into the painting through the logs up to the focal point, which is the warm yellow grasses there. 
and I appreciate you watching this video. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you want, hit that bell. Till next time, thank you very much. Cheers.